just allowing ourselves to begin to settle into the present moment. And when I ring the bell again, let's see about the pureness of sound, just sound arriving at the ears. We have our senses, which is where we gather all the information that we receive. And part of the practice is being as simple and pure as we can about it. So we just allow sound to come to the ears without grasping it, identifying it, making it pleasant or unpleasant. There may be sounds in the room around us, close-up sounds or farther away sounds. One of the senses, the purity of sound arriving at the sense door of hearing the ear door. And we may have the sight door if we have our eyes open and there is light coming in without identifying really what it is we're seeing. We just allow the pureness of seeing to arrive at the eyes. And we can do that with each of the senses. Tasting, smelling, touching, we can notice the eyelids touching, the lips touching. Where the hands might be touching. We can notice our seat on the cushion. And then there's the thought door as we notice thoughts coming and going at the mind door. And so we have each of these places to notice with mindfulness what is arising and passing away. That things are arising and passing away. And we stay neutral and open, mindfulness at the fore, awareness present, And sometimes if there's a lot of busyness going on in the mind, there may be restlessness or tiredness or doubt. There can be clinging and there can be pushing away the, all of the various hindrances. Sometimes it's helpful to become a little more concentrated at the beginning of the meditation to attend to that pure sensation of the breath. the feeling of the air into the nostrils. Or perhaps also there's the feeling of pressure at the diaphragm when we inhale and the letting go of that pressure when we exhale.
We just want to let ourselves be natural, relaxed, at ease. Sometimes it's nice to do a relaxation, letting go through the body. If there's tension, we can relax at the eyes and at the jaw, around the temples, just noticing. Sometimes as soon as we notice it, it relaxes. Other times, not so much. And we can just notice the duration of what's arising. But we can purposefully do a little sweep, mind sweeping through the body, around the shoulders and down the spine. Feeling the weight of gravity on the chair or the cushion. We can acknowledge this base of stability. We have this container of the breath and this base of stability at the touch points, at the sits bones. To hold ourselves with ease and kindness right here in the present moment being with whatever is arising, either noticing the breath, being with the beginning, middle, and end of the breath, or noticing whatever comes to each of the sense doors when we're aware of them. Without effort, or without a lot of effort, just enough effort to be present. <clears throat> like the example of tightening the loot string. Not too much effort, don't wanna break the string. Not so little effort that there's no sound that comes from the string. Just the right amount to be aware and interested and present with what arises in this very moment. without judgment about it, without a lot of conversation about it, just the purity of arising, noticing the impermanent nature of what arises. It stays for a certain amount of time and passes through our mind and through our body, has an ending, and awareness is there and present and we stay open just being in this spaciousness or being with the breath. Until our mindfulness and awareness notices the next thing. Sometimes that might be a long time. We're just present with the breath, with the spaciousness, with our bodies, with our seat on the cushion. We can have appreciation for the Buddha, the Dhamma, and the Sangha. We can incline our mind toward skillful thoughts if we get too confused and a lot of thinking that of appreciating the enlightened beings who went before us and were able to see for themselves clearly and give us the opportunity to take refuge in our own and ability to awaken in this lifetime, in this moment when we are aware of what's occurring. 
And we can have gratitude, appreciation for the teachings. So many of them translated as best they could over generations in a format that was able to be memorized and passed along. And a gratitude for the sanghas of monastics and lay people. Those that have gone hundreds of years before us and continue passing along the practices and the Buddha's Dharma. Right down to us in our group. May we Hold these, this triple gem of the Buddha, the Dhamma, and the Sangha in our hearts. As a place of refuge. We might ask ourselves, what is the attitude of the mind right now? What is happening right now? Every now and then we may be tired or bored or lost or perhaps in physical pain. We can bring ourselves around to asking ourselves what's happening right now. We might notice there's aversion happening. Or we might notice the simple sensations of, ah, oh, this is pleasant, or this is unpleasant, or I can't really tell. Introducing noticing sensations can sometimes simplify the practice for us. As a variety of things arise in the body and in the mind, and we may have storylines going, and we can just wake up right there at that moment and say, ah, oh, is this pleasant, unpleasant, or unknown? and stay there with whatever arises next, or go back to the breath or the touch point. For developing a little more concentration or allowing awareness to be present, mindfulness to be present, to just be open for the ebb and flow of all things that are arising and passing away. And we see this clearly with mindfulness.
You may notice as we're sitting, if the mind is wandering and needs a little direction into some skillful, skillful thinking, we may remind ourselves of some of the factors of awakening. And we can notice that they're present. Mindfulness is present. Investigation is present. We have energy present. There might be gladdening of the mind each moment that we're noticing that we're present in this moment. There can be a kind of pleasurable interest in what's arising and sometimes rapture can actually well up and waves of various feelings of electrification sometimes through the body. There can be a joy, a kind of emotional confidence. And sometimes that can quiet down and there can be a kind of tranquility. We may, might notice that rapture is there for a while, but it's replaced with a quietness. And our contemplation can go forward with a little more serenity sometimes. And that tranquility can bring a unification of the mind, a concentration. And there can be equanimity that we may notice, an inward balance that's free from extremes. It's free from excitement and it's free from inertia. Equanimity is like the observer of the balanced experience that is being cultivated with mindfulness. That we can encourage the mind to be poised and balanced and just watch phenomena as they arise and pass away. And so sometimes just remembering these words as we're sitting, we might have a repetitive thought that We've had a lot before and we can go back to it easily. So instead we just guide the mind toward, ah, mindfulness is present. Investigation, energy. You can always find one of those enlightenment factors present. It can give us confidence in our practice.
Noticing what arises. Understanding the Four Noble Truths that what arises arises generally because of craving. It just becomes due to conditions coming together and we cling. And if we let go, we notice that things arise and pass away without our control over them. And if we don't let go, that's okay too, because we're aware of what's happening. We're aware of what's happening in the present moment. We're beginning to understand the Four Noble Truths that discomfort arises It happens usually because of craving something, becoming occurs, conditions come together. And if we cling to it, it creates discomfort. And if we let go, there's less suffering in the mind. body can become calmer, the mind can become more relaxed. But sometimes that's not the case, that's okay. We're with whatever is arising without attachment to whether it's pleasant or unpleasant. gladdening the mind when we find ourselves present, appreciating awareness when we notice it, even being appreciative of things that seem difficult as they arise because we're aware of what's happening. We may notice discomfort in the body and need to move, we can notice the intention of the thought about the movement. We can notice what happens at the beginning of the movement. We can notice as we move, as we adjust, as we make whatever alignments we need to make. And we're present with the moving. And thoughts that arise in the mind are the same way. We're present with them. We may notice when we're finished with a train of thought. And we wake up to that moment. Our intention of noticing the beginning, the middle and the end 
of what arises and passes away. Shows us its, shows us its changing nature. Noticing sounds that might be close up or far away, coming to the senses. Staying present with the anchor of the body. We may be lost or confused or we stopped paying attention somewhere. That's fine. That's just the way it is right now. This is the way things are right now. That brings the moment of mindfulness and awareness to the present, a moment of awakening. Those moments of awakening we string together along with those consistent moments of mindfulness. Reminding ourselves of the merit of doing this practice, choosing to be training the heart and mind right now. We can hold ourselves in kindness and remember some of the good deeds we've done. Gladdening the heart and mind. Turning the mind toward the skillful. Letting the heart be present, the body be grounded the anchor of our breath. We don't really have to do anything. We're just present with mindfulness and awareness.
And as we hold ourselves gently in this place of consistency, may we remember to bring ourselves into the present moment, holding ourselves kindly with gentleness, acknowledging in our hearts, in this cauldron of our container of the body, reminding ourselves to be kind to ourselves, be compassionate when things arise that are hard to deal with or hard to manage and reminding ourselves, may I have ease and well-being. May my body be healthy and strong and may I take care of myself happily. However that feels for you, whether it's in words or a feeling or maybe a memory of something that's pleasant, that brings happiness. Allowing ourselves to bring well-being, bring kindness to ourselves. Allowing compassion to be present when things are challenging. Letting equanimity be there as things are difficult. And allowing mudita, sympathetic joy, allowing a joy to arise. And as we hold ourselves in this practice of the Brahma Viharas, the heavenly abodes or as Sister Ayakema says, the only emotions worth having, kindness, compassion, joy and equanimity. May we let the this thought of metta of kindness also include a close friend, someone for whom it's easy to have loving kindness. Including this person in our hearts, that they may be peaceful and tranquil and have ease in their lives. Using whatever words or feeling works for you As we hold this close friend gently in our hearts, may we allow that compassion that we have for them when things are challenging, including for them that they be compassionate with themselves. holding them in our hearts that they be, have ease and be at peace.
and setting this person aside slightly, but including them with ourselves in this kindness and compassion practice. Let us include a teacher, a being that we've been close to that has, that we've benefited from. Traditionally, it's a teacher Could be your first Dharma teacher. Could be that third grade teacher you remember. Could be an animal or a child. including this person in our heart space, that they may have peace and ease and well-being. Take care of themselves happily. May you have ease in your life. Seeing this benefactor, teacher of some kind, seeing this being happy and healthy and including them in our compassion practice, knowing that when things are challenging, that we can feel their discomfort and allow a sense of ease as we nurture and, and include equanimity in our practice. And including in our heart space with this teacher, may they also have compassion for themselves when things are challenging. Staying concentrated by repeating a phrase or having the feeling. Saying a few words that keep you present and aware of this teacher. Not worrying if the heart and mind wander. And setting this person aside a little with our close friend and ourselves and beginning to include a neutral person or a neutral group of people. During these times, there are so many groups of people to think of and include in kindness and compassion. Whether it's those struggling with oppression or those struggling in hunger, those struggling in sickness, or just the one single person that you saw today that you don't know, but you know, just as I wish to be happy, may you also wish to be happy. We know we share this. May you be peaceful and tranquil and have ease.
letting this kindness be nurtured in our hearts.